Good morning guys. I am out on Lake Chelan today. It's uh, been a few years since I fished this lake. This lake is very cyclical like many kokanee populations. The average size goes up and down in this lake and for the past few years they've been pretty dinky. Uh, sardine size in my opinion and so just haven't really been interested in coming out and chasing sardine sized kokanee in 60 to 100 feet deep. Uh, but it's back on that upswing and we're starting to see some larger fish pushing 15, 16, even saw an 18 inch pulled out of here the other day. So uh, I thought I'd take a, some time today to discuss why, why aren't there more kokanee lakes with big kokanee? Why are most kokanee relatively small, you know, 14 inches or smaller? So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. There's several reasons why, most well beyond the control of man, but not all. And let's get out on the water. Uh, I got a little bit of a late start today because it was 31 degrees when I woke up this morning. It's the end of April. I was hoping to be a little warmer, but I think that sun out there is beckoning me and hopefully there's some kokanee underneath it. Let's get going. Oop, there's fish. It's one of the main reasons why you won't find lots of large kokanee is that it's the very nature of the lakes that kokanee occupy are just not that productive. So we have these terms in aquatic ecology um, classifying lakes and their productivity and on one end of the spectrum you have eutrophic lakes. So those are highly productive lakes. Imagine like shallow ponds and warm climates, something like the Everglades, where there's just tons of net productivity, lots of energy, lots of nutrients. But that's not where kokanee live. Kokanee live in what we call oligotrophic lakes. They are cold, they are deep, and they are not that productive. And because of that, there's just not that much food resources, which generally restricts the size limits of kokanee. Um, there's just not enough food in a lot of these lakes to grow giant kokanee. But there are lakes that do produce them, and there are certain features about those lakes that allow them to grow really large fish. First kokanee of the day. All right. Don't get a little squirrely on me. There we go. First one in the boat. Nice, that was on uh, chartreuse today. There's fish. I think this is one of the reasons why I really like those smaller and medium-sized kokanee lakes that have a little bit shallower water that are stocked. They tend to have a little bit higher net productivity than these big deep cold lakes. And you can get some shockingly large kokanee out of small and medium-sized lakes. You'll you can get 16, 18 inch fish. It's not uncommon. Oop, got a double going. Get a double. I don't feel this guy anymore. I don't know if he's just swimming with it. Oh, he's off. Okay. 100 feet back is a long way. Oh, look, there's a fish right there. A kokanee came up and hit that thing while I just had it right by the kayak. Oh, he's off. That's weird, that was near the surface. Interesting. That's, I mean, that was literally 10 foot under the boat. And the kokanee hit that thing. Oh yeah, this is a nice size fish. There you go. That blew my mind. I don't think I've ever caught a surface kokanee at Chelan like that. And that was, I can literally see the dodger right here. And he hit it. Oop, there's fish. Now another reason that kokanee don't tend to get very large is just the nature of their food. They're filter feeders, they eat zooplankton. Oop, got a double going. And even though that food is very nutrient rich, it's not in very high densities in these lakes, and it's not large. Now there are definitely examples of kokanee transitioning to eating uh, fish becoming piscivorous, but it does damage the rakers on their gills. They've done studies on that, um, especially in lakes where kokanee get large and they have higher energy demands. They will start feeding on fish, but it is at a cost to them and it reduces their ability to be plankton feeders. Oop. Get in there. 
There you go. This guy's still here. It still feels like he's there. So yeah, so I think the just the very nature of the food they eat. I mean, obviously like whales eat zooplankton and they get giant, but they're eating krill and they're out in the ocean, which is far more productive than say a lake like Lake Chelan I'm in today. All right, let's get this guy in the boat. It's nice to convert a double in the kayak. See if we can make it happen. Yeah, we got him. It's all right. I don't do that every time. Oh, there's fish. Yeah. Oh, still there? Yeah. I'm sure a lot of you noticed that when you fish lakes with lots of kokanee, they tend to average pretty small. Whereas there are lakes with very few kokanee, or maybe you only scratch out one or two a day, those fish tend to be quite a bit larger. This fish is really thumping. And that's because kokanee size is a density dependent factor. In other words, the size of kokanee is dependent on the number of kokanee in that lake. And that's because of something we call intraspecific competition, which is a fancy way of saying that fish of the same species are competing with each other for the same resources, which makes absolute sense, right? And so the more kokanee you have, the more they're competing for the same resource, the more likely those fish are to be stunted and smaller because there aren't enough resources to grow a big kokanee. Yep, he wrapped himself up. That is a big kokanee too. He lassoed himself, which is always funny when they do that. Oh, he came off in the net. <gasps> Crowd goes wild, crowd goes wild. That's a big kokanee. First land. First fish. Nice. Yeah, so if I was to take a, a graph and put size along the bottom axis there with increasing size to the right, and density on the left and I was to put a little point for each lake uh, Kokanee Lake across the United States looking at density versus average size in that lake you would get this downward trajectory the overall trend will be for increasing size as density declines get my Kokanee here we go that's another nice one. Yes. Oh, there's fish. Nice. So you might ask, what is affecting density of kokanee? And there's there's two things that are going to affect kokanee density. In lakes that are stocked, it's the stocking rate. And unfortunately, in a lot of states, uh, they put far too many kokanee in a lot of these lakes, resulting in the stunted fish uh, if they just backed off a little bit uh, i think you'd get a lot higher quality kokanee production out of these lakes without sacrificing catch rates all that bad i mean i would much rather go out and you know get a half limit you know just get five or six fish that are 16 inches rather than quickly get 10 that are 12 inches but maybe that's just me but then there's a lot of lakes like Chelan here. Chelan does get stocked, but uh, it's primarily uh, getting most of its fish through natural reproduction. And there's a lot of lakes like that in the West, which is why it's cyclical because, so you'll get you know times when there are just a huge abundance of fish in this lake and that reduces the average size of the fish. And then you'll get periods where there's just fewer, a little bit fewer fish and you'll get a little bit uh, larger uh, fish so you know that's why Chelan kind of goes through these natural cycles where it's generally small and then for a few years the size average will bump up and then it'll go back to small They saw me nut that fish and they cut their motor. Monkey see, monkey do. Another nice one. 
on the green chartreuse. Oops, fish. <laughs> Going crazy down there. Really like that chartreuse color today. Now there's another form of competition that can negatively impact kokanee size. So besides competing amongst themselves for food resources, a lot of the states, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, uh, were introducing mysis shrimp into a lot of our lakes. And unfortunately, mysis shrimp feed on zooplankton, just like kokanee. And uh, the resulting impacts of all those mysis introductions is that it really wiped out a lot of our kokanee fisheries and caused a lot of our kokanee fisheries to uh, become stunted because it just reduced the number of resources in that lake. And I think, you know, this is also part of the reason why I think as, as kokanee anglers, we should be really concerned about invasive species like quagga and zebra mussel because those species are filter feeders and they will strip all of the zooplankton from a lake and can potentially wipe out a kokanee fishery if they are to get established in our lakes. Uh, thankfully, we don't have them here yet, but it's just a matter of time. There are a number of species that will compete for zooplankton resources, but I think you know the biggest problem species out of all of them is, of course, mysis shrimp. There are some lakes that kokanee have adapted to feeding on mysis shrimp, but those lakes are the exception rather than the norm. Whoa, this is a huge kokanee. Holy cow. This is a big kokanee for this lake. Alrighty. Might be my biggest one of the day. Woo! Dang, that thing's... That's easily pushing 15, 16 inches. It's a great fish for this lake. So what are some things that you can do to potentially help create some bigger kokanee fisheries near where you live. One is to encourage the state not to overstock. I think this is a common and widespread problem. Additionally, in those lakes, especially those natural production lakes where uh, there's just a lot of small kokanee, you can also encourage them to liberalize the limits of kokanee on those lakes to help reduce the numbers and free up some of those food resources for the remaining fish. Other basic things that we all should be doing, which is making sure that we dry off our boats and clean them so that we're not spreading invasive species, a lot of which compete with kokanee or could potentially negatively impact kokanee, are also something that everybody could and should be doing. All right, guys, I'm gonna try and scrap up my last fish here for the day and then head in. I'll see you next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.